He's back. Joseph Wall is set to make his season debut with the Leafs tonight. So does he automatically get the number one roll back or does that still belong to Anthony Stolarz until Stolarz falters? To discuss that, here's Mark Masters. Mark, how do you think the Leafs handle Joseph Wall's return? Well, they, you know, just talking to his teammates in the dressing room, they want to they wanna make sure they take care of this guy today, knowing he's been off for a while and he's been looking forward to this uh, season debut. It certainly hasn't been the best start, of course, for him missing this time. Also of note, he's facing his hometown team. He's from St. Louis. He's got the Blues in town. First time he's ever faced the Blues. So I'm sure there's a little extra emotion in this game for Joseph Wall, the teammate. The teammates want to take care of him. Uh, and, yeah, in terms of where it goes from here, I, I imagine we'll see Anthony Solar Saturday in Boston. They have a really tough stretch here. Then they got the Winnipeg Jets on Monday in Winnipeg. That's a big game. So uh, I imagine now that Wool is back, we might see things turn into a bit of a day-to-day -day kind of thing when it comes to the Leafs' crease. Speaking of facing the Blues, a big night for Craig Berube. Personally, I saw you call it at the Berube Bowl. I love that. He's facing his former team for the first time since the Blues fired him last December. You spoke to him about it. How's he feeling about facing them? He's not a sentimental guy, Gino. Uh, and if we needed another reminder of that, he was asked if he knows where his Stanley Cup ring is. Or he's asked, he was asked, where is your Stanley Cup ring? And he did not know. He says, is that home somewhere? He joked maybe his wife sold it. Hopefully that's not the case. But, yeah, it's not like he came into the dressing room or into the podium today wearing his uh, Stanley Cup ring or anything. But we did see him. Meeting with some of his old Blues players uh, outside their dressing room this morning. A lot of laughs, a lot of smiles. You know, he acknowledges there's some emotion here, but he's trying to downplay it. Say, look, we, we need these two points. That's what he's stressing. He doesn't want this to be about him. But I got to tell you, Gino, every player in both dressing rooms that we spoke to said that this is a big game for Craig Berube. The Leafs want to win it for him. The Blues want to spoil it for him. When the Leafs fired Sheldon Keefe to bring in Barube, we we're all anticipating a culture change. So my question is, how does that play out? Coming off the heels of getting shellacked by not a very good team in the Columbus Blue Jackets, what happened between then and now? I know they had an off day yesterday, but what's the attitude now in trying to bounce back? Well, I think for the most part, they're trying to flush it. You know, Ryan Reeves was telling us this morning that, you know, Barube was a player. He understands that sometimes there's going to be nights where you just don't have it. They don't want to make excuses, but they want to move on. Craig Brube said they just didn't check. They didn't check early in that game. That's... That's, that's like a central piece of his the identity he's trying to put into this Leafs team is checking. They always got to be able to check. If you check well, you're always going to have a chance. They did not do that early in the, in the game in Columbus. Austin Matthews said that the neutral zone was like the Autobahn uh, for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they were just flying through it, uh, and that's just not good enough. So clearly they need a bounce-back performance. In general, you know, I was talking to Jordan Cairo this morning, and he said he sees a grittier Leafs team in general because of Craig Brube. He just won't let you off the hook when it comes to the physical play. Uh, Ryan Reeves says up and down the lineup, there is more physicality with this Leafs team. So that's the Brube effect on the Leafs. Let's see how they respond to this first dud performance under Brube, and that will tell us a little bit more about the kind of impact he's having. The D did not look real good on Tuesday. There's been a lot of talks around it, and you guys in the blue line, Oliver Ekman Larson and Tanev, have been solid for the most part. Tanev was supposed to open things up for Morgan Riley so he could do what he does best, but Mark, it doesn't seem like it's worked out so far. He's only got two points in seven games and nothing in his last three. What's going on with Morgan Riley right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I spoke to him this morning. He said, you know, I asked him about his game. He turned it back on the team, says there's been a lot of good things. And, um, you know, yeah, we're, we, you know, the idea is that Morgan Riley is kind of an offensive uh, defenseman. He's playing with Chris Tanev, can take care of the defensive side. And uh, Riley's just got the one goal, one assist, uh, not on the score sheet in the last three games. So, you know, and he's lost his spot on the top power play unit. So, obviously, you know, the power play hasn't been doing great. Uh, but certainly, you know, that's that's one less area of the game where he'll be able to contribute offensively. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's hard to say exactly that. Uh, what's going on specifically with Riley's game? I think there's a new coach, a new system. Maybe there's an adjustment period there. But I would expect as we move forward in the season, we see the points starting to come uh, more frequently for Toronto's kind of, you know, most offensive defensemen. Yeah, his ice time has, has dropped a little bit. We've seen Ekman Larson and McCabe relied on a lot in that pair. So, you know, new coaching staff, you know, trying to get a feel for the guys, how to best to use them. And we'll see if as things progress, Riley, the points, I am sure, they'll start coming a little more frequently.
Speaking of changes, David Camp was a healthy scratch on Tuesday, just the second time that's happened in his career. Is this just the new reality of life under Craig Berube and his tough love approach that no one's really off limits? Well, I mean, just look at how he's used David Kampf. Kampf has not been a, a go-to penalty killer uh, on this team this season, and Pontus Holmberg has. So when you're looking at who might be the odd man out, you know, Holmberg stays in, and Kampf comes out, and Kampf will come back in today. Max Pacioretty is dealing with a lower body injury. He's listed as day-to-day, -day, so he won't play today. But, yeah, we've seen Pacioretty sit. We see Bobby McMahon was a healthy scratch in the first game of the season. Obviously, yeah. he's played really well since then. I can't imagine he's going to be back in the press box anytime soon. But, uh, you know, they wanted competition. There is competition. There's the injured guys who are working their way back, guys like, you know, Connor Dewar is getting close. You know, he's still on long-term injured reserve, but early next month we could see him. Kelly Yarncroke still hasn't started skating, but when he gets back, that's another option. They've really wanted to stoke the internal competition. I think they've done that. You know, guys who have come back have played well. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if Camp is the latest to respond here tonight. Mark, you're a busy guy. Mark Masters with the Leafs as Joseph Wall returns to the lineup and Craig Brube goes up against the team that fired him. Should make for quite the night of hockey.